Dr. Namita Agarwal, the DP coordinator at Pathways World School, Aravli. Uh, we have been using the DI calculator for over six years now, and we are quite happy uh, with its functions. I think more than us, our students are very happy about it because uh, this is a very dynamic calculator, and uh, children being very techno savvy, they enjoy uh, using it and um, they explore more than even we can do. Uh, personally, I love the uh, functions option that this calculator offers, uh, especially the graphs where you can uh, zoom in and out of the screen, you can pull the screen to the left, right, everywhere, and you can even uh, label the functions, shift the labeling anywhere. Uh, you can even uh, uh, make a scatter plot uh, do the regression on it. I think there are so many options that this calculator offers. Uh, I think it's uh, when we find it uh, fun working on this calculator, the students definitely do. And uh, my ex-students have been telling me that all over the world we have been using the TI and it's a good option to start uh, using the TI at school level. It uh, makes a smooth transition into the university for them. Thank you. Good afternoon, I'm Pavan Mittal. I'm from Scottish High International School and I'm heading Maths Department there. I'm teaching IB from more than a decade and uh, I was using Casio calculator. So almost six, seven years I used Casio. But uh, from last couple of years I've started using TI calculator and I found that this calculator is comparatively much better. Uh, due to different reasons. Number one, I can see the high resolution. Number two, the fast processor. And the most important, it always comes up with different colors and different, I'll say, even uh, like some sort of uniqueness is always there in the calculator. And uh, in the latest model, I've seen there are better graphing packages which are being there. So it's a great experience to use TI. Uh, from last couple of years. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ankita Sharma, IB teacher. I'm teaching at Nija Modi School. If I talk about TI Inspire CX Calc GDC, it's quite fantastic. The features are quite user friendly. The kids are finding it really very, very comfortable to use it. If I talk about the ninth graders, those who are doing the international math and they are using the GDC for the first time, they are finding the applications to be very, very uh, user friendly and they are finding it very easy to access most of the applications which are there in it. And in your uh, IB also, the students are finding it really, really fantastic. And as compared to other GDC, it is quite easy, uh, accessible as well as quite easy to use. Thank you. My name is Daniel Flynn. I'm uh, head of mathematics in St. Joseph's International School in Kuala Lumpur, in Malaysia. Um, I've been teaching maths for eight years and I've been teaching IB for four years. And in the four years I've been using TI calculators. Uh, the first year I was using TI-84 and then I started using the Inspire. Well, my school started using the Inspire. Um, which is funny because it was very difficult to change over. But once I've changed over, now I use it in my school. Um, and I would find it very difficult not to use the Inspire. I guess my favorite things about the Inspire are, the first thing is that it's very easy to use. Uh, if you want anything, all the functions are in the menu. If you want to entry uh, of any sort of mathematical symbols, they're all in the utilities. So everything is where it is. Um, the second thing I think is the graphing window. It's very, very easy to use, easy to interact with. Um, and you can plot anything to your specifications, whatever you want. Um, the third thing I think is a visualizer, but I use that mostly in the classroom. Uh, if I want to teach students how to use a calculator, it really, really helps that I have the visualizer on my board, uh, clear for everyone to see, the buttons key in. As I press the buttons, it shows red. So it's very easy to teach calculator skills to students using that software. Obviously, another couple of things are the, the huge amount of resources out there, the videos on YouTube, um, the TI, the education at TI website. Um, which is full of stuff for teachers. So to be honest, uh, it's really the most supported, uh, most powerful, and best calculator. My name is Anjan Chaudhary. I'm heading the maths department at the Doon School. 
this ti workshop on texas instruments has been quite a meaningful workshop for me the tools on the ti which i am not familiar with i have come to know in this workshop and i intend to use it for my students at the end of the day one of the reasons why we do the ib is for the students and this is a new tool for me and i would like to keep using it for the betterment of my students the ti inspire cx uh, has got a nice tool called sliders and uh, the best part about that learning is it's a dynamic learning tool so it allows a lot of movement which is very difficult to draw on the blackboard i feel that in the modern times where education systems are changing this tool needs to be used quite relevantly and also in a time bound frame in the classroom so that the students are familiarized with the use of this uh, with this tool and at the end of the day it will benefit their actual learning of mathematics hello i am harmeet and i'm working with heritage experiential learning school i'm working i'm teaching uh, maths um, ai um, and uh, international mathematics uh, courses uh, for the past 2 years there so uh, when it uh, when we talk about ti uh, the texas instrument uh, calculator it's been a uh, uh, introduced to me 2 years back and uh, i usually i i don't use the hard uh, hard um, handheld version but what i use is an emulator or a software that i usually take it up in the class through a projector which my whole class can see easily um uh, so what i'm why i'm using ti is so it helped me with various basic features that other calculators also do provide like finding the intersection points uh, finding the maximum and the minimum and um uh, let's say just say zero uh, i i do it use it to do regression modeling uh, but what else i i like that the ti features that i like is uh, uh, like curve tracing and all, curve tracing and all uh, which uh, students can take up for their ias and extended essays when 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 ib talks about uh, uh, use of uh, tools like geogebra and desmos all these can be easily done through ti as well so currently um, my students are using ti as it provides them very good classroom learning experiences Uh, the various tools through which we use ti and the very important one is data capture so we 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 do data capture uh, through geometrical figures on ti and then take that data on a spreadsheet once it is taken on spreadsheet we can also do regression on uh, on these scatter plot features that the ti provide and ultimately that leads to graphing of that graphing of that uh, particular data once that is done you can also do predictions uh, through drawing tables rest um, i think um, everyone should uh, also go uh, go for ti cas cas calculators because it provides you better learning experiences in the classroom it provides you much better tools and uh, with the new ib guide also says that ti cas cx2 is also allowed and what we can do is we can later on put it on test mode while the students go for go for exams so i think yeah for me ti is um, i think i i prefer ti and i will explore as much as much as much as it can one of my friend has recently actually told me how you can use innovators also and i'll try my hands on that also maybe ti programming so yes i will recommend it thank you good evening everyone i welcome you all thank you for your interest to join the session my name is swati and i am a trainer in numerical analytics instruments private limited let me brief you about the company first numerical analytics is a leading provider of modern educational technology and analytical technology its presence in india is since 2008 the head office is in new delhi and the main office is in kuala lumpur malaysia under the educational technology we are the sole distributors of texas instrument calculators the scientific calculators graphing and the financial calculators across india we work with many educational institutes schools colleges and universities along with ti calculators we are also the distributors of science equipments like probes and sensors all the vernier probes and sensors are compatible with ti graphing calculators the other division is the analytical technology where we support the research analyst to avail the leading quantitative and qualitative research softwares the softwares are used in colleges universities and research institutes 
Numerical analytics partners are Texas Instruments, eViews, NVivos, and Tipco. We have been dealing with many IV and IGCSC schools across India. <laughs> the list is really long. So I picked up one or two schools from each state. These are some of the schools that I have highlighted here who are users of TI from a very long time. All the American schools in India, like American Embassy School in New Delhi, American School of Bombay, and American School in Chennai, all are the users of TI since very long time. And we also have the Indus Group, Indus International Group across Pune, Hyderabad, and Bangalore. They are also the users of TI. And the very one of the very reputed school in Mumbai, the Oberoi International School, and the very oldest school in India, the Kodai Canal School and the Good Shepherd School, and also the John Cathedral School. These are also the users of TI calculators. Now, the calculator is a learning tool designed to help students visualize and better understand concepts in maths and science. The calculator TI Inspire CX2 is the latest version which was launched last year. Here you can see it on the screen up here. So let me first brief you about the keypad of the TI Inspire CX2. Here you can see the calculator is divided into three zones. The navigation zone, the math and numeric zone, and the alpha numeric zone. And on the right side of the screen, you can see you have some computer-like keys on the calculator. For example, the escape key, which helps you to come out of the screen as the computer does. The tab key, which helps you to move from one entry field to another. The control key. The, but the symbols, what you see about the buttons in blue, all those symbols can be accessed by pressing control key and that particular key. For example, about the shift, you can see caps written in blue. So if I want to access caps, I am going to press control and shift to access that particular option. And the remaining keys like shift key, delete key and the space bar, all of them works as the computer does in the calculator as well. Now let me show you some of the brief uh, keys in the keypad. So here, below the control option, above the equal to symbol, you can access the rational keys. For example, greater than, lesser than, not equal to, and so on. Beside equal to sign, you have a trig key, which has all the six trigonometric ratios, including the inverse of it. And in the alphabetical zone, the pi symbol. So when you click on the pi, you can avail all these options. Pi, complex number, infinity, exponential, theta, and the conversions, degree, radian, gradient. On the right side, below, uh, beside the number nine, you have a math template, which gives you all these options, like summation, differentiation, integration, logarithmic, matrices, and all of that. And beside this match template, you have a book kind of structure. So that is nothing but a catalog. So whatever operations you have in the calculator, all the operations can be found under the single catalog key. So you have all the operations in this. And in the alphabetical zone, you have this symbol where you have all the punctuation marks in it. And you can see the X, Y, Z are the letters which are in a black color, a different color. So basically in maths, we use X, Y, Z as variables. So that is why they are highlighted here. Now moving forward, due to COVID-19, TI is offering several free resources to help students and teachers continue teaching and learning remotely. 
So therefore, you can have the software downloaded from the TI website on your laptops and you can use it for six months. It is for both teachers and students. So once you download the software from the website, it will uh, be valid in the laptop for about six months. So from this year, the TI uh, Inspire CX2 CAS model is also approved by IB as we ha have an option of disabling the CAS function. Yes, you can disable the CAS function and use it as a non-CAS. So during press to test also, the CAS gets disabled. Still, it is very useful for IAs and exploration. Let's see some exploration and investigating activities today by two of our experienced TQ trainers who will be sharing their valuable insights and expertise with you. Mr. Jimmy and Mr. John Paul Raj. You also have Q&A portion at the end. You can also post your queries during the session under the Q&A portion. Okay, let me first introduce our first speaker, Mr. Jimmy. He is from Texas Instruments and he is an educational technology consultant, a TQ Asia manager. He holds an honors degree in math from Nanyang Technological University in Singapore. He specialized in applied mathematics and has always had a passion in both teaching and mathematics and love to explore how technology can be cultivated and implemented into learning mathematics. He was previously a mathematics teacher for a private school in Singapore for three years. In addition, he has been using graphing display calculators for over 10 years. Now, Jimmy is currently an employee of TI Educational Technology Division in Asia. He has conducted over more than 20 workshops and presented at conferences and centralized events across India, such as Singapore, Indonesia, India, Taiwan, and Thailand. Thank you. Over to you, Jimmy. Hi, th thank you, Swati. Thank you for your kind uh, and very generous uh, introduction. Can everybody hear me? All right, so today, uh, for the presentation, I'll be actually going through uh, the investigation and query on the IB exam questions and that I will be I'll be going to show you how how we can actually examine the IB, the IB question how do we actually uh, use the TI Inspire to uh, investigate and also solve the question and as, as we all know that for the new IB curriculum more and more uh, emphasis on technology is being, uh, being focused on and you see, even for the exam itself, there will be questions that says using your graphing calculator, solve this, using your graphing calculator to uh, do some um, hypotheses and so on. So there's, um, today, we are going to mainly focus a lot on the analysis and approaches uh, curriculum for the new IB curriculum. And uh, I'll try to go through as many questions as I can. Uh, we have a few questions in mind and uh, we want to show you how we can actually use this, use this calculator to actually answer these questions. All right, so as, as I begin today, we're going to start off with, uh, I'm probably going to show you a direct application of how we use the TI Inspire. So we're going to start off with actually the HR paper, HR assessment paper, paper three, question two. All right, so for, for, this, for this particular question, give, uh, I will actually, uh, we actually go through the question. So, my, my uh, focus is more of actually trying to analyze the question, how do we actually uh, uh, approach the question and see where can the calculator come in. So even bef uh, before I begin, uh, Soti has just uh, earlier mentioned on some of the key functions of the cal graphing calculator. So uh, as I go through and do those questions, um, I will be actually using those keystrokes as well. Don't, don't, uh, do not be worried if that say, you are new to the calculus, I believe there will be some of you who are new to the TI, TI technology and you will not know exactly what to press and so on. No worries. Um, I, I believe this, this session is actually recorded, so you actually can uh, try, on, try on hands on uh, on your calculator or on the software in your, in your computer and actually go through the keystrokes into 
uh, as, as, I, as I solve this question. Okay, so let's first let's take a look at the question itself. So I'm going to look at paper three, question two, the specimen paper. So this is the question. And we are supposed to investigate some properties of the sequence of function of this particular form. Uh, uh, cosine bracket n r cosine x from negative one to one, and n being a uh, positive n being positive integers. So a very good point here to take note is that we do not need to actually sketch the sketch the, uh, the coordinates. I mean, you don't have to indicate the coordinates of the axis or, or so, but we just want to analyze what actually happens to this this particular uh, sequence of functions. So the very first one solve is something simple first. Let's try to actually sketch this graph, these two graphs out. So we want to uh, sketch out the same diagram. Take note that uh, f uh, y equals to f1 of x equals to f1 of x equals to cosine 1 times r cosine x. And f3 is f3 of x equals to cosine 3 times r cosine x. And take note of our domain, negative 1 to 1. So let's go back to the chair inspire. So in, a, in the chair inspire, there's actually a few ways to actually uh, approach this question. Like for example, I can just go into the graph and I sketch out the graph at least. But I'd like to show you a particular feature of the chair inspire that is actually very useful, not only for you to, uh, to call out the functions, but I'll show you that there's this, uh, there's this link between the different uh, pages. So, just a little quick uh, tip here. For the, for the chair inspire, we have different pages. As you can see here, this is page 2.1, and this is page 2.2. So within the different pages, uh, we can actually store variables, we can actually store functions, and then uh, use it for the for across, let's say for example, um, I think some expression here, like for example, fx. fx, and I, I can store it. So how do I store? There's a lot of different ways. Uh, I wouldn't want to go through every single one, just to probably just give you an example. Uh, control. Okay, this is this button which is very, very uh, useful for us. This is called the, I'll call it the math template button. You see, it gives me above it as a colon equal. This is actually defined as. So what I'm actually doing here now is I'm storing the function fx and define it as something. So uh, going, uh, if going back to the question, I'm defining it as Cosine. So how do we get cosine? Uh, that's what Swati mentioned just now. Click on the trigger button, cosine. N times arc cosine. Okay. We don't show it arc cosine here. We show it as sorry. We show it as cosine inverse x. You don't have to close the bracket if you just press enter. So that by pressing this verbal button. You can see what the functions are uh, defined in your calculator. So this is, uh, we'll come to this in a while, but for now, we want to sketch a graph of n goes to 1, f1 x. So I can do it another way, which is define this f1 bracket x. There's a reason why I actually do this. Uh, I'll come to it in a while. I'm going to define it as f1 of x, and then define it as One, you can do your first, you don't have to put one, but I just want to put one to just show you that this is f1 of x. One times cosine inverse of x. I can put it in, you can, uh, like I mentioned, you can do it as well. That. And the question also wants us to sketch f3 of x. So all same thing, I would write, I will define f3 of x. So just to go through uh, the keystrokes. Control, math template for the define button, trigger button for the cosine, three times cosine inverse x. All right, so for this case here, now once I have this graph, right? So, okay, we also sketch it out. So, what's the point of actually keying all this? Uh, we'll come to that in a while. So, now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to create another page. Okay, so far, you've seen that this page was earlier created. Um, there's no text on how to do it. And you can actually do this in the exam as well. So uh, there's a lot of different ways to do it. My favorite approach, I try to give 
um, the, the fastest approach to actually go to the different buttons as, as in how uh, you need it in the exam. So to create another page, if you look at the document button, just below the on button, then it writes plus page. So if, uh, if you have noticed by now, for all these buttons with uh, word, if some blue words above, to assess that, you press control. Like how we did the math, uh, above the math template button, you have a colon equal, which is the define button. So same thing, I'll create a new page. So I just press control, document. So now these are all the different apps that we have in Athena Inspire. Uh, to, for me to go through all this, I probably need more than go one and a half hour or three hours even to go through all this, because there's a lot of features. That if by defining a particular function and you create any of this, you, those functions that you define and you start, you can really, uh, easily assess them. But of course, the question is whether do you need to. So for this question, we are going to sketch the graph. So I'm going to add graphs, right? And now I will press the tab button. See, so automating the tab button, when I press the tab button, it actually tells me to sketch the graph of F2. It wants me to key in the functions of F2. Now why not one or so? So the reason is, as you see, what we did just now, I defined F1 to be cosine bracket one time cosine inverse. So I already defined F1. So in this case, in this graph, F1, how do I get to F1? You can just press up. It's already been defined for you. See, it's all linked. The pages are all linked. So by doing this, all you have to do, either you can use the uh, touch pad, right? And click on this square box, or if you are on the computer, or you're even in the calculator, you can just press enter. The graph will be sketched. Okay, then in this case, uh, okay, this is the, gra this is the graph itself. Uh, the, the question wants us to sketch from negative one to one. So to get a better view of this, why not we change the screen, screen itself? So how do we change the screen? The most uh, basic approach that we usually do is uh, menu, press the menu button. So as what uh, Sodi mentioned just now as well, this button is very useful. And I believe if you've seen the video, uh, some of the, uh, of our uh, educators also mentioned of this button as well. So this button for the different pages will have a lot of uh, uh, functionalities inside. So over here, we're going to use Windows Zoom. And you see there's a lot of different types of Zoom format. For this case, uh, we already know what's our, our domain. So I'm going to use Windows setting. And from here, you can change the color. So if I go to that, if you want to serve, this graph, we, can, we need to have our domain from negative one to one. What about our range y values? Is this right? It's also from negative one to one. But uh, to, be, to be safe, what I would do is I would change it to, I'll put this uh, x value of negative one to one first. X skills auto. So this case here, uh, basically, they automatically help, help me to even out the, the spacing between negative one to one. If you, uh, you can change it if you want to, the scaling of maybe let's say 0.5 for example, up to you. The y value over here, I'll, I'll be a bit safer. I want to analyze the, the graph in full. I'll put negative two to two. Of course, you want to put negative one to one, it's fine, to, fine with me as well. All right, so this is the graph itself. I, uh, from this graph, there's no things you can click, uh, hold, uh, click on your screen and drag around. You can move your, uh, your graph equation away so it doesn't block your, your, your feature. And you can even further change your, the, the thing itself. And let's say, for example, in this case, I accidentally click on my uh, touchpad. I click on it and I say drag wrongly, something like that. You can always press Control, Escape. Control, Escape. Control, Escape actually, there you go. it's an undo button. It's the same as Control. Z. Right, so this is an undo button, and of course your control Y, we do buttons as well. So you can actually do that. So over here, yeah. If let's say, uh, I don't like this because it seems like there is something to the right. Like, uh, I mean, I know, I know the graph won't go from minus one to one, but sometimes we need to actually investigate the endpoints of the graph as well. So maybe let's say I'm gonna change the, the X axis a bit more, make it, make it, make it from negative two to two. Another method you can do that is by bringing your cursor over to the, uh, the minimum values or the maximum value and double click it and change it to two. Press tab, you will realize that the values will ro rotate in the clockwise direction. Press tab again, I put in 
negative to tab. If this is, if this is the graph you want, you can just press enter. See, so in this case, yeah, my whole, the whole graph is there. So this is, uh, this should be an easier uh, visualization and you can actually sketch this graph onto the, uh, your answer screen. And okay, we are not done because we need to sketch the graph of F3 of X on this uh, diagram as well. So let's do that. So how do we go back to sketching F3 of X? Press tab. Press tab. You see the, the top column will come up, uh, appear again. Yeah. Press down. Pressing press down will give me F3 and enter the third graph. I move the, the graph label for better view of the graph. Um, okay, I know everything seems black and white here. Like, is it, is it always the case? Not necessary. But when you define your function in the earlier page, like this, and you sketch it out, you tend to come out in the black graph. So let's say you want to change the color. You can. This is a colored calculator. So all you have to do, right click. Okay, so there's a right click button in the in the calculator as well. If you're using the software, it's very easy. Just basically right click your mouse. But if you're using it on your handheld. Method is to actually make sure that your cursor is on where you want to be. I want it to be on the graph of F3. Then the right click button is actually control menu. So, you know, this control menu button is a very, very useful trick and it helps you to shortcut. It's kind of like a shortcut uh, button to uh, all those important, important features that you'll be using throughout the uh, web. And there's a lot of things we can do here, but for now, I'm just going to choose color, find color, and you can choose a different color. Yeah, of course, you can change uh, F1, Fx if you want to. But for now, I think this is sufficient. So as we go back to the question. Yeah, for part A, we sketch the graph. Done, two marks. See, do you, see remember, we do not need to uh, find the axis, the x in the set. We do not find the fission point. So this, this is done, two marks there. So now, the question goes further. For part B, all values of n. And so in other words, we are looking at three, five, seven, nine, and so on. Once you can go even as, as far as you want, uh, I don't know, 31, 33, and so on, but we don't really need to go too far. Right, so now uh, we want to look at all the values of n. We look at the graphing display calculator, which is our chance of five here. And you want to actually observe what happens to the, to the graph. And for part one, we want to find how many local maximum points are there. And part two, how many local million points are there? So, one one uh, if you are doing it uh, manually, then of course you, you have to, if you have the uh, I I saw in the comments some of you were mentioning about the TI eighty four. So let's say if you have a TI eighty four calculator, you will probably have to key in every single graph. All right, you're going to try to key in uh, F three of X, F five of X, F seven of X. You just slowly key everything and try to find. Okay, so the thing is that for the TI inspire, we have this very powerful tool for the slider function. If you if you uh, heard about it, you probably heard about it during the introduction uh, video just now. So how do we make use of this slider function and what is it all about? So let's go back to the TI Inspire. And now I'm going to sketch, uh, just, just to recap, we're going back to this function fx cosine nx. So now we are going, I'm going to use this now. So n is actually the value that changes. So we're going to make use of this fact here that n is a value that you can change as when you like. And we're going to use this function to help us analyze for n more than two, and n is odd. So I'm going to create another graph page. Uh, you can actually do it all here, but it's, it's going to be a bit messy with the graph of f3 and f1. We can also, if you if you if you're interested, we can actually hide this graph by pressing Control Menu and for height, so you can keep it away. But I wouldn't recommend that was in the exam. Let's say uh, as you are going after you're done the, of the entire paper, you want to go back and actually go through whether you're done correctly. So if you re, if you remove this in this this entire graph here, uh, you be, you need to redo it again to check your answers. So I will create a new graph page. Control lock two for graph. So now uh, I won't use F two. Okay, there is there's a reason for that. And I also will use F four. Uh, I'll stay in a while. Let's do, let's use F five. I'm going to key the graph of fx. Ah, so this asks, yes, Lou, do you want to create a slider for n? So if you recall, this is the n you're talking about. Right, so 
Now, what I'm going to do, same thing first, before we even uh, uh, do any observation, let's try to make the graph, the screen better, because uh, we want to make sure you want to view all the critical features of the graph, how many uh, maximum points, how many minimum points are there in the, in, the, in the function. So let's do that. So my favorite method here is actually our, rather than going to menu, window, zoom, and so on, I like to use this double uh, function to tap, to tap, negative two, tap, negative two, tap. Is okay? Enter. Next, this, this, are the, this is the slider. So uh, before I even do anything, I know this is wrong because uh, we, our, if you go back to the question, we only want to go for values of n more than two, and n must be a, a positive integer. So this, this whole thing is wrong because you consider n being negative as well. So we don't want to go to there. Let's change our slider to fit the question it is. So what do I do is I actually move the, the slider to, move the cursor on the slider, right click it, control menu, uh, press move first so you can actually drag it around to where you want it. Uh, I, like, I like it to the bottom left. Again, control menu, right click. Now we click on the settings. So we have to observe for values of n of three, five, seven, and so on. So the starting the value here is the starting value. So we can uh, output as three first. That's the starting value. Uh, basically, the value that is when you exit out of these settings, what uh, the value is. Then minimum value here, I'll put three. Because that's the what the question says. Well, maximum value. Okay, the thing is the calculator unfortunately doesn't allow us to uh, uh, for all odd numbers uh, from three and above. It doesn't do that. Let's do high number of uh, odd numbers. So it must have a limit to that. So you can choose uh, any odd numbers after. Of course, if you choose five, uh, you're only able to observe three and five. If I choose seven, I'm able to observe three, five, and seven. The question here is that you need to come up with a uh, formula for the number of maximum point, number of uh, local minimum point. So try to have more, uh, try to have a larger maximum value, which is also odd, and you can actually kind of observe some pattern. So let's say um, 21, I, mean, I just want some, I don't want to go like 11 or so, but it's probably you can observe more, have some uh, freeway. Of course, if you want to choose 15, you want to choose 17, it's up to you. Step size, uh, this is important. Automatic, uh, when it says automatic, what it does is that, from 21 to 3, you actually divide, you take the uh, you take the difference, divide by 10. You create a 10 uh, step size of uh, 10 different uh, step size between 3 and 21. It may not be a nice uh, five, uh, 5, 7, 9, and so on. We want it to be odd. So our step size has to be 2. So it goes from 3, next number with 5, 7, 9, and so on. Right, so um, once you're okay with this, the rest, you can change this if you want to. Oh, I'm going to minimize it just to make it, uh, make the whole um, scale smaller so they got more, more room in the screen to view the question. Yeah, so let's drag it to the bottom left again so you got more space here. Once you're done, escape. See, now it becomes a black box. And if you press the left and right uh, button on the calculator, you see, the graph actually changes for different values of n. So this is for F5, F7, F9, F11, and so on. Of course, it goes all the way to 21. See, if you put very big numbers, you will probably see almost, uh, uh, if you put very large numbers, the hundreds, hundreds and so on, this whole area here will probably be shaded. There's so many uh, oscillations here. So just, just uh, that's by this feature here. You can actually look in, uh, the calculator lets you uh, more, uh, Choose different best of the question, like investigating how many, what's the expression you want to get. And just a bit further, you can animate it as well. So the calculator will just animate for you to show you what happens when the n changes accordingly. Right click again. Sorry. You can stop the animation. Right. Okay, so this is the important feature in the graphing calculator, especially in the TI Inspire, where you can actually use this uh, feature to analyze the question. Now let's try to come up with some, uh, uh, at, at this same time here, that's a quick one. Let's try to solve this question 
as we use the JAN Inspire. So uh, you can pin your answer in the chat box if you, if you, if you like it. Otherwise, you can keep your own, it's fine. Uh, for the teachers, I believe uh, you will probably have the solutions as well. So uh, feel free to join as well. So think about it. How many, let's look at part one. Right. Where you ask for local maximum point. So let's look at the local maximum point for these graphs. So when n is 3, I have 1 maximum point. When n is 5, 2 maximum point. 7, 3 maximum point. Remember, maximum point, it must be a turning point. Right? These are not maximum points. 9, 4 maximum point. 11, 2, 3, 4, 5, 5 maximum point. So let's try to come up with a uh, formula for this one. That means when n equals to 3, what is the number of maximum points there? It seems like this one. So does it, mean, does, it, does it seem like the formula is uh, n minus 2? See, if you, let's, let's consider this thing here, n minus 2. It's 5 and 2. Does it work? Because if n is 5, I should have 2. But 5 minus 2 is 3. Does it work as well? So we, um, the question here is actually asking you to come up with a pattern. A formula for this and uh, what is the number of uh, whether does it fit the uh, for different values of n okay um, due to the time constraint I won't be going through exactly how to do this but the idea here is actually n minus n minus 1 by 2 so when n is 3 3 minus 1 divided by 2 1 5 5 minus 1, 4, 4 divided by 2, 2. 7, 7 minus 1, 6 divided by 2, 3. See, so this is the answer. n minus 1 over 2 is the number of local maximum point for the different values of n. So this question is also a bit uh, sim similar for your local minimum, the part 2. So local minimum, it relies the number of local maximum equals the number of local minimum for different values of n. 2 local maximum, 2 local minimum. For seven, three local maximum, three local minimum. So similarly, you can also say that the number of uh, uh, local minimum points for n more than three is n minus one over two. Yeah. So this, uh, with knowing how to use this feature here, you'll be able to easily solve this question on how to actually investigate the different sequence of functions. So so far, we are dealing with the odd, the odd numbers of n. So uh, the question actually goes for that, I you for even numbers of n now. So let's look at the question. Right, so, C, on the new set of axes, sketch the graph of F2 of x and F of x. See, so the reason why I didn't use F2 and F4 is because of this part here. So I can key in F2 and F4 accordingly, and you can also um, do it for D, including the slider for n more than equals equal to 2. So, how do we, uh, let's just do a quick one. I'm going to show you another way of how we can actually key in the graph. So, what we did earlier is that we define it in the calculator page. We define F1 and F3. I'm going to create another graph page. Control, doc, graph, and just key, you can just key in your F2 and F4 here. So, this case will be Cosine, two time, cosine inverse x. See, if you key in this way, the graph will be colored automatically. And press tab, F4, cosine, sorry, yeah, cosine, bracket, Four time. Uh, Jimmy, cosine. sorry to interrupt you. Uh, your screen is not visible. Calculator screen. Okay, so sorry for that. Let me share my screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. So sorry for that. Okay. Um. Let me just uh, redo. So what I did just now was I actually create a new calculator page, and what I mentioned was we, instead of defining everything. In your calculator page, as what we did here for the earlier part of the question, 
we can actually just keys everything into your calculator, into the graph. So I leave F2 and F4 blank just now for this question. So we can just key in, uh, directly into the question. So let's key like this, cosine two times cosine inverse x, tap cosine two, sorry, four times cosine inverse x, enter. See, if you, not, if you do not change the window settings, it looks like a, a big mess here. So let's change the window settings. I'll do the my approval method. That's directly going to the, the, the extreme values and double click it and change the values accordingly. Two, tap, two, tap, negative two, tap, negative two. So if I press enter, shift the label around a bit for easier clarity. And yes, you're done. You can actually sketch this onto your, uh, onto your, onto your answer sheet. Uh, once you're done with this, you will go on to the next part of the slider, slider function as well. So the next one here, I'm, uh, I'm just that you know, uh, I know this part is a bit repetitive, but I just want to highlight that uh, how to use the slider function and uh, some things you have to take note of as you use the slider function in this uh, graphing calculator. So I'm actually going to uh, actually kick it. Sorry, um, can you can all hear me better now? Sorry, my voice, I understand it's a bit um, off. Uh, do, do let me know again if you hear, if you think, uh, if you could not hear my voice clearly. Okay, so coming back to this question, I'm going to sketch another graph again for, for uh, clarity. And of course, you can key in the graph of fx. Uh, fx is what we defined earlier. Or otherwise, just key in the whole graph itself again. Oh, uh, for teachers, when you're using software, one little trick is rather than Go into the buttons and and click on the function. You actually type it up, but be careful as you type it up because you need to make sure that you type out correctly. Because if you type out wrongly, the the function will not be as as what is shown or as what is you want it to be. Okay, in this case, I do want to use and so just uh, the question actually uh, says that cosine right cosine n up cosine x. So Fn is, is this. The thing is, I don't have to follow Fn. I can make it as Fm, M for Malaysia, and cosine M, uh, cosine X, that's fine as well. So the reason why I'm doing that is so that it, uh, you can, you do not have an overlap in your different variables in your question. So I'm going to use M for this case. Cosine M times arc cosine, oops, sorry. Cosine x. Now you ask me to create a slider m. Because if I don't do that, if I click n again, right, I will be using the same n as this question and as what we did earlier in for the odd numbers. Okay, that's that's the point here. Okay, other. So once you got that, same thing, just to uh, bring it to your cover level, change the way you want it, change the setting now. Uh, starts from. Uh, n more than two, right? So the lo lowest will be four. four. Minimum value will be four. Maximum value up to you. You can use, uh, I will use, let's say maybe 10. Step size, two. Enter. And sorry. to minimize it, so this will be easier for us to uh, navigate. When you change the value of M, the graph will change. Right, let me just uh, adjust the window setting. There you go. So for different values of M, now you can actually observe. Observe and see what are the what are the different uh, how many how many maximum local maximum and local minimum points are there. So this are, okay, one thing to hit I let go. Uh, now we're talking about even numbers, do not assume that it's the same. The graph looks very similar, but do not assume that the number of uh, maximum points and minimum points are the same. So over here we see that 
No, the maximum point here is one for when m equals to four. What about six, two, eight, three, ten, and m is ten, four points. So these are the these are number of maximum points. So we work with maximum points first and try to come up with a number of uh, the for the sequence for the number of maximum points there. So think about it. Uh, for the, for the students who are who have joined this session, think about your, how how many uh, maximum points are there. Try to come up with a formula. Try to make news of the of the similar idea that you did before for the for the odd numbers and see can you come up with a similar uh, uh, expression. One more thing to highlight is that for this question here, the number of maximum points and the number of minimum, uh, minimum points are not generally the same. Let's do it. When m is four, you have one maximum point, whereas you have two local minimum points. When it's six. Two maximum, three minimum. Eight, three maximum, four minimum. Ten, four maximum, five minimum. Actually, look at this. I find that the minimum point is probably easier. Since it's, it's like always half of the value of m, right? And m is eight, four minimum point. M is six, three minimum point. So I will take it uh, as you see that for the minimum point is n over. Okay, so sorry, I'm a bit uh, short of time here. So let me just go through one more point of this. Uh, for this whole question, unfortunately, not the entire question is uh, is involved in use of the calculator. Uh, unfortunately, <laughs> so there will be uh, some the later part of the questions where you actually have to use the con uh, you have to use the use your understanding of the concept of uh, um, of your of calculus of um, trick number three to help you solve the question. But for the last, for the next point, uh, part four, oh sorry, part E, that's a quick one. I'll show you one more additional feature of the TI Inspire. So we are supposed to solve this expression and hence show that the station number, the station point occur at this number, of, uh, occur at these points. And we know that K is a uh, positive integer from zero to N. So if let's say N is two, we know there's either uh, zero, or one point when n is three, sorry, not zero. Uh, n is three will be one and two points. So there's uh, a k can be one point or two point there. Sorry, two. Uh, uh, when k equals one, k equals two, so it's two points. And n is four, be one, k equals to one, two, three. So there's three points and so on. That's a quick uh showcase here that we can <coughs> actually also sketch the derivative graph of your yeah, of your of the graph that you want. It, it, uh, it doesn't even have to sketch the graph of something that we know. Like this case, I, I, if, one, if I want to sketch the graph of F4, that's a quick one. I can do that. Press the, how to, uh, to do so, you press the math template button. Click on derivative. And let's say I want to sketch the derivative of F4. The calculator allows you to sketch the derivative graph. Sorry, let me share my screen. The calculator allows you to sketch the derivative graph itself. Like this. Then what I'm gonna highlight is that does your graph has to be, I mean, does your equation of your curve has to be a, a known expression? Can it be the case where like uh with an unknown parameter n? Yes, we can do that as well. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to uh, uh hide it, hide this graph, and show you that. We can actually sketch the graph of the, the sequence of sequence of function. The der sorry, the derivative graph of the sequence of function is here. Same thing. Press on the math template button. Differentiate x. I'm going to use f x here. What we define. Let me change the window settings a bit. Let me, let me add in the slider so that you can see what happens to this. So how do you add the slider? Press menu, go to one for action, and go down to B, insert slider. So I'm going to use the function N, uh, uh, fx. So fx, start with uh, three. Oh, you can just start with one if you want to.
uh, this, uh, this part here is a bit repetitive, so I won't really explain too much here. Let me just adjust, adjust the whole screen properly for you. Okay. See, this is what happens. See, if, you're, if you actually choose automatic, you automatically steal for you the step size. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the step size one. This is the derivative graph itself. And let's add in the original graph. So this is your F3 graph. The N3, and this is the derivative graph itself. Realize that the, when, when the x intercepts of the derivative graph is where your turning points are. So uh, uh, what I highlight over here is that you can actually sketch your your, your sequence of functions graph here, and you can also further sketch the derivative graph. And you can use this to check how many points, how many solutions are there to your derivative graph with the x-axis. And that actually helps to uh, see that for the question, why is it that it's from zero to n? Okay, the, the, this, this part here is show that these functions okay at this point, this is actually you solving it algebraically, so I'll leave it to you to to try it out. And for the rest of the question here, a lot of uh, algebraic solving, algebraic manipulation, a lot, um, uh, not much of, uh, uh, much, not much involvement of the calculator. So uh, there's a lot of uh, features here and I actually have one more question to, I wanted to show you. Uh, probably if we have the time later, uh, we can do something like this. But otherwise, um, uh, that's all for I have for me now. Um, yeah, so any, uh, any questions, feel free to ask me or John later during the, the Q&A. If not, uh, I'll pass my time over to Swati. Thank you, Jimmy. Very well explained. It was really informative. And those interesting features that you have showcased about the slider, the colors of the graph was very nice. Okay, our next speaker is Mr. John Paul Raj from the Cathedral and John Cannon School, Mumbai. He is a math teacher and also one of the TQ trainer in India. He has done his master's in math from Mumbai University and pursuing a course on mathematical mindsets from Stanford University. He has taught at some of the most reputed schools in India like Bootstock Masuri, Kodai Kanal School, and is currently teaching at the Cathedral and John Cannon School. He teaches IB Mathematics, IGCSC International Math, and Advanced Placement Calculus. He has 17 years of teaching experience now. He is passionate about using technology in education and has used TI products and is familiar with TI ecosystem since 1997. He has also done workshops in various schools for teachers and students. Over to you, John. Okay, thank you so much, Swati, for your uh, kind words. Uh, thank you, everyone, for uh, uh, being here this afternoon. Jimmy, that was fantastic. Uh, and. Uh, I had certain things in mind that I wanted to show in terms of the features, uh, but because Jimmy had already um, covered some of them, I will not do it right now, if time permits. And if some of you have questions, then you know we definitely like to uh, redo them. Uh, but as you all know that the recording is going to be available. So at any point of time, uh, you would be, you know, uh, it would be better that you can go back to the video and, you know, pause and at your own pace, you know, rewind and check out those features. But there's one little thing that uh, uh, I thought maybe I'll also bring it up. Uh, the first question I was looking at is from a paper two, HL paper two. This is 20, 2019. And most of this, you know, I mean, um, uh, most of the features, I'm not just talking about the question, but most of the features uh, of the TI Inspire uh, that could be used in solving a question like this. Jimmy has already con uh, covered. So, you know, uh, due to time, I will not go through that. However, what I want to do really is I want to look at this particular question. This is from a, uh, uh, from a, from the previous old syllabus. 
the portfolio tasks. Uh, some of you might even recognize that, and it's a wonderful question. In fact, at the workshops, we were encouraged to use this amongst our students uh, in preparation for paper three, which apparently is the the big thing these days. Everyone is talking about paper three, paper three, paper three, paper three. So we are also talking about paper three here. So quickly, without wasting much time, I'll just look at this one little uh, feature about the graphing aspect, uh, and uh, you know, and then we can move on to that. So I'm going to. Uh, quickly jump to my uh, T-Inspire. Uh, some of you probably already noticed that uh, the 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 text screen, you know, the the document insert text. Uh, when you go through this Control Doc to add the add notes, is a fantastic feature. Uh, teachers who are uh, I accidentally added it. I'll just show you how to take it out. Also, you can go to the page layout and just delete that page. Uh, I did not want it there. But you can add a question there, especially when you're uh, uh, teaching something. It, it, it becomes very handy. I put the same question here. Uh, but the notes page, page is fantastic to use, you know, even though it was not mentioned, but Jimmy used it so well. And even I found it very uh, helpful. But this question, I have, uh, as you can see, I was actually using similar features that Jimmy had already used. So Jimmy, thank you for doing that for me, all the definitions uh, of the functions. But I'll go straight up to. Um, uh, this part of the question, you know, this part of the question, which is part C, which says that the power P in the circuit is given by uh, this expression powers uh, uh, the voltage times the current. Uh, part C defines it that way, and there's a, uh, the graph for it. And then the part D says find the total time in the interval T uh, between 0 and 0 0.02 where the power is greater than or equal to 3. Now, uh, I mean, there are many ways to do it. Uh, but I just thought I'll just show one quick feature of that. So if I have um, three, which I've already in indicated then, obviously we want to find that the point of intersection. And the point of intersection is something that, you know, is uh, so uh, commonly required. Uh, but I found a really cool way to find, uh, uh, you know, there are four points in one, one click or in one set, you can get all four together, you know. So just, if you already know this, great. If you don't know, then don't blink, okay? Watch. Uh, and uh, even if you know, it's a good, a good idea to just, uh, um, you know, review that. Uh, so here we go. So I'm going to go through menu, geometry, points and lines, intersection points. All right. If you didn't get that, I'll do that again. All right. So I'll go through menu, geometry, points and lines intersection points and then ask for the graph so you just select one graph and even while you have just hovered around the second graph and there you can see all the four intersection points just there like I said in one click if there were seven guess what all seven will be there in one click for you pretty good pretty handy especially you know in questions like this paper three where you've you have a race against time literally you know I mean uh, and uh, yeah, pretty good to find out that way. And uh, the question can be solved. If you look at the question that way, you know, find the total time. So obviously, when is it uh, greater than? You look at the interval and subtract the two. That part is uh, pretty mechanical. You can do that. But I just wanted to highlight that one uh, additional feature in the graphing utility where you can actually find uh, multiple points of intersection in just one go. Uh, anyway, that was the one thing in the question uh, that I had uh, kept in mind. Uh, will this work? on exam absolutely it will work on the exam mode it will work on the exam mode all right so and we call it press to test in our uh, in our TI world okay uh, never mind never mind uh, but it will work on the exam mode but I'm going to skip this question because of lack of time I'm going to go straight into our modeling question uh, actually I had a lot of uh, fun things uh, but some other day never mind uh, let me go back to that question so uh, this is the question I'm looking at if you don't have the document you know we will find a way to get these documents to you this is an old portfolio task those of you are uh, teaching uh, IB uh, whether it's AA or AI especially AI where there's a lot of modeling the theme of modeling keeps coming again and again and again and again and again and you know uh, it is kind of, kind of laborious trying to put all these data in uh, to your TI but um, uh, but then today I think uh, my objective is to just show some quick tips tricks how we can solve these questions. I actually did this very question in my class and I first did it um, 
without showing them some of those tips and tricks. I wanted them to just you know play around it and then find out what what's the best way to do it. And uh, and some of them actually could not complete the question. And for those teachers who are here, uh, who have been through workshops, uh, you might recall that the first comment that many of us made after seeing the paper, uh, the specimen paper, was, "Will we finish it on time?" Right. So. I think that's where it is very useful to come up with or look for these uh, shortcuts that will help our students and ourselves, okay, how to best use in the time of exam and uh, during the time of exam. So uh, I will uh, I'll make sure that this question gets to you. Some of you probably have already seen this question before, maybe even tackled this question before. There's a question about uh, population uh, growth, the data for England and Wales. I don't know why only England and Wales, but let's just stick to England and Wales for now. Uh, between 1801 and 1951, no census was taken in 1941 because of the Second World War. Interesting, isn't it? Um, and so that's the data. And uh, the question, obviously, the first part of the question should be uh, no brainer for us. Use GDC uh, to make a plot of the population against time. Now, often when students uh, make or read that word plot, they tempted to connect the points, all right? So even though this is not TI related, because I'm a math teacher, let me just reach out. Students who are here, when that says plot, it does not necessarily mean a plot that joins the points. It's just a scatter plot they're talking about, all right? So just as the data is given, how will you represent the data of population against time, all right? Just a little tip. So let's get back to our calculator and uh, for those of you who are familiar, uh, that's the page I have. And for those of you who are not familiar, let's just show you where you get that table. So you go to Control, Doc to insert a new page. And here we're looking at the Listen Spreadsheet page. Okay, uh, That's where you enter the data. And uh, you know whatever you want to call the label, you can put it on right up the top there, or up top here. So here I've already created that for you so that you know it will be, become easier. So I just put it up as 1801, 1811, 1821. But check this out, okay? Just check this out. Just because I've already entered, let me just show you one little quick tip that I found, all right? If you are familiar with Excel, then this should be no brainer. So I'm just going to give it a different name here because if I type time, as I've written time here, it recognizes as bold. That means, you know, it recognizes it's already there. So let's, for the sake of convenience, let's just call it time one so that it's a different one. But I want to show us something, okay? So it's 1801, 1811, 1821. And it goes in that pattern, all right? So here we go. So if we had, if I put 1801, 1811, now if I just select the two, and if I drag it down, do you think it'll be smart enough to pull in that se sequence? You know how we do it in Excel. So I want 1821, 31, 41, so on and so forth. If I just like in Excel, if I just drag it down, do you think it's going to do that for me? Let's find out. <gasps> wow, that's nice, isn't it? Isn't it? So I think students, teachers who are there, just play around with these small, small, finer details. You will save time. Remember, as I said, okay, we, uh, that's up to 1931. I think we needed it up to 1931, something like that. And then obviously, I have no other way to find a shortcut to enter these data. You have to do it by yourselves, okay? But be very careful. That's the only tip I can give you as a teacher. Because you know what you enter the data from the uh, uh, from the question paper is very important, and as you can see, there are many, many, many digit numbers. Okay, so if you uh, recall, I'll just show it to you again. Uh, just be very careful as you're entering the data, students. Even during the time of the exam, um, you know, even when you're checking your paper, I think those are the things they need to check because later on the calculator is just going to calculate what you've entered, right? So uh, jumping back to my calculator screen again. Thankfully, I had entered the data and uh, kept it ready for us. Making the scatter plot uh, of that data is what we want to see. Uh, that you go and add a page, uh, control doc, and this time we are going to do data statistics. Data statistics, okay? That was list and spreadsheet just to enter into rows, uh, into columns, into different columns, as many as you want. But now uh, we've got a data and statistics. Pick your variable character, just go click. And here we had time. I'd called it time, all right? And then the population can be on the. There you go. Nice scatter, nice, nice looking scatter part there. And obviously, the questions have to be answered according to that. But uh, students, if you're watching this right now, remember, 
uh, almost like a screenshot almost like a screenshot when the when the question paper asks you to sketch a graph uh, almost like a screenshot what you see on your calculator page try and you know yeah copy with all the details if it was a graph like Jimmy was showing earlier with maxima minima points and all those you know details make sure that you have labeled all those key features even if the question is not saying so even if the question just says sketch by sketch that's what the meaning is that show all the important features of maxima minima intercepts you know, all of those uh, included in this case they've asked you to draw the scatter plot uh, the plot of uh, population against time that's what it is and the next question uh, in um, uh, I think I have those questions written on my uh, TN span, so I don't need to go there. So, yeah, it says comment on the uh, population growth uh, during that period from 1801 to 1951. Uh, and that comment has to be based on this one, all right? So, typically, and I would have asked uh, students to speak up. Uh, so, why don't I do that? You know, I mean, uh, are people allowed to chat? Uh, are they allowed to write? Why don't you type your text? Type, just type an answer. What do you think? What do you think? If you're a student, if you're a teacher, hold on. If you're a student here today, what do you think? Comment. Let me see what you can. What are you, what, what, what's, what are your observations? I won't give you much time, but just make a comment. Come on. Don't be afraid. Can you show the question? No, just comment on the linear growth. Okay. See, this is this was the question. If you uh, comment on the growth during those years. Describe the regression. Comment on the growth, my friend. There you go. Increasing. Okay. Anything else? Anything else? Logistic growth. Okay. Anything else? Increase. Wow. Increasing nearly linearly. Wait, 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 wait. I like that. Nearly linearly when examined from a macro scale. My God. I like these words. However, there are slight curves depicted. Okay. Nice. Someone wrote a bunch of alphabet which I'm not able to understand, but that's okay. Linear, linear growth. Many people are saying positive correlation. Oh, wow. Fantastic. Fantastic. Look at it. Okay. Um, when you comment, when you're writing a comment, remember, as far as the IB is concerned, even if you're able to break it down, okay? When I, what I mean by breaking it down, some of you said linear. It looks lin linear between periods. Could you say that? Uh, from here to here, but with different rates. The rate of increase is different from here to here, from here to here. So almost linear, almost linear. You can break it down slightly exponential at the top. Oh my God. Wow. I love these words. I really like it when people describe it all these wonderful words. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I don't know uh, how, many, how many points that was for, but in, in, in comment, based on your graph. Your, your comment is based on your graph. Okay. So uh, what you have sketched by looking on the, at, the, uh, at the scatter plot. You're going to make those comments. So that was the comment that you got to write. Okay, that is my which I've done. Then I think the next part of the question is something like this. Let me just show you the question. Okay, uh, and I wanted to bring this, uh, highlight this part because even my students had a problem with this. Uh, so uh, there you go. You can see that question part B, which says uh, uh, comment. Part C. Now this is a bit longish, so I'm going to try and you know um, uh, what do you call it? Summarize what the question says. So it says. To estimate the population, they've given a formula for average growth rate. It's very much like the slope of a straight line. We just spoke about the rate, correct? Uh, so average growth rate is very much the slope, formula for the slope. And then they said, for example, uh, between 1801 to 1811, they've calculated 2SF, 203 SF, I don't know, uh, um, uh, 1.27 times 10 to the power of 5. And then they've introduced another word. They've called this the average proportionate growth rate okay two different formula given and then look at that part it says construct a table look at this part construct a table of values of both the average growth rate that means this formula and the average proportional growth rate for each of the time intervals between the censuses in the given table and then comes another comment that you'd make now remember how many data points did we have that's a lot okay that's a lot and you have this formula given and you have to write form actually if you're going to calculate using a formula for each of those values that's a headache and remember what I started off with time is your enemy 
All right, everyone who's done a paper three question, tried it off, okay, time is ending. Again, again, we will use that same feature. Remember I showed you that drag and drop? drop? Same feature. What worked in that Excel will also work here. So if you are paying attention or if you did not pay attention at that time, don't blink this time. All right, don't blink this time. I'm going to show it to you, all right, ready? Okay, I'm going to switch to my calculus screen. And if you're already paying attention, like good children and good teachers, I mean, teachers, you probably know all these things. But children, if you're here, uh, you know, it's a good way to just recap what's going on. So here we have this uh, table as it was. And uh, the first one was just a slope, if you recall, right? So it was average growth rate. So I'm just going to call it AGR in short, AGR. And immediately you can see it bold. Why? Because I've done my homework. I've already, you know, uh, populated this uh, tables elsewhere. That's why it's recognizing. Never mind. Okay, here, oh, wow, ah, oh, that's a problem <laughs> because it was already there, right? So never mind, let me just say undo, okay? And let's call it something else for the time being, okay? So I'm going to call it average uh, growth rate, okay? Because AGR was already there. I'm just going to make it a long name, okay? The same thing, I'm going to create it, okay? Um, it's the formula for the slope. So what we're going to do is that we're going to enter a formula. We're going to put equal to this cell, minus this cell, okay, y2 minus y1, if you can recall that. And because we want an x2 minus x1 in the denominator, we'll just put some brackets there. And the calculator is so smart to give us the closed bracket. I just put one bracket, all right? And then we put r divided by x2 minus x1. Here we go. So we put a bracket this time, and we want this cell, and we want minus that cell. See, isn't that such a smart way to work with the formula now? Right? Now, now, guess what? If the, if the Inspire is smart, it should smart, work smartly by just dragging and dropping. And that's what we're going to do. There we go. Hallelujah. It's all done. This will save time. Because you've got to use your time to make those comments. That's what those interpretations. Use your time wisely. Okay? And use the technology also smartly. All right? It's a smart piece of technology. So the table also, rather than, I think, except for the column two, which I'm sorry, I have no other trick. You know, I, I, I looked up many places. Um, in fact, if, if it was a PDF, I think you can copy and paste. But uh, at the time of the examination, especially when you're using a handheld, that's not going to work out. But these features are going to help you. All right. I think that was pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I thought so too. Um, now, here's where I have completed the table for all of us. Uh, the average growth rate and the, the second formula. Uh, let me just go back to the question and see what's going on uh, in that question. What, what did we miss out? I think there was an analytical solution somewhere. <clears throat> so, oh yeah, here we go. Uh, it says it is assumed uh, that the proportionate growth rate was constant from the year 1921 onwards. Uh, estimate the populations. Interesting question, okay. It, was, it is assumed that the proportionate growth rate was constant from the year to uh, 1921 onwards. Estimate the populations for the year 1941, 1971, 1991, 2001. Okay. Now, as you can see in the question earlier, they told us that 1941, uh, no census was taken. So they're trying to estimate that Okay, uh, because of the Second World War, uh, census was not taken. Uh, but I bet they had taken this uh, census for uh, the remaining years. Um, but we haven't estimated, it, okay? Um, let's get back to the calculator and figure out what's going on. And E, as you can, while we are, uh, never mind, I'll come to E later on. Um, calculator, 1921, let's look at our data. Okay, 1921, if you go down, there you go. It's almost 0 0.05, okay? And even if you go one cell down, Again, as you can see, 1921. So I think they're going to round it off to 0 0.005, okay, just to help us approximate. Uh, I have some calculations done because I don't want to show the calculations, um, uh, how to use the calculations. Uh, I'm more interested in showing the, the features of the calculator. So very quickly, very, very, very quickly. I think I have it here. Where is that? Um, yeah, here. Here's where I wrote those things down. Uh, let me just quickly show you something that I've done. Otherwise, I don't want anyone angry with me. 
Okay, I'd already done this thing uh, out, okay, uh, and uh, it worked out to uh, a nice form, all right, uh, 1.05 times x, okay. If you want the solution, I can give it to you uh, later on. Maybe I'll write it in a better handwriting and a nicer color, uh, whatever your favorite color is. Uh, but I worked it out, and uh, the explanation to this working also, I put it on the TI. But the most important thing which I wanted to uh, highlight was this part, if you can get that part, 1.05 five times x where the x actually refers to the population of the previous year okay um, uh, so going back to my calculator uh, please try and understand I'm just trying more em uh, emphasizing the calculator features and not the calculations uh, some other day perhaps when we want to talk about the calculations we can talk about it later but uh, uh, if you want the solutions definitely I'll write it properly and give it to uh, Swati and Jyoti and Rayuti and they'll send it out to you guys but here's what I'd written uh, the explanation explanation to that you know um, in brief but if you want those uh, clear workings uh, I'll, I'll share that with you also so it works at 1.05 times x and you can use that in fact you know again using what Jimmy showed us earlier how to um, define so if I just put T I just was running out of letters so I just called it T T is not for time okay uh, trying to estimate the population after a certain year okay so x is the previous year uh, and you know in order to estimate so um, I checked it uh, with this calculation and with my handle calculation worked out well and that's a nice way to use the calculation and estimate the population okay uh, here I have dealt I've made another uh, list and spreadsheet page just as you would add and 1931 was already given to us is that right 1931 was already given to us and we don't know about 1941 we were asked about I think 1961 or 70 and something like that I don't even know you know, 51 was given to us on the table sorry 51 was given to us on the table here again we can use that formula yeah absolutely here again we go back to the formula and we say okay you know what we have a formula so this was 1.05 times the population of the previous year so times that previous cell Okay, just like you do it in any spreadsheet and there, once you hit enter, it will give us the population. So, you could use these things uh, and the moment it's done, guess what? Drag and drop. Not drag and drop, sorry, drag and keep dragging. And that question which suddenly had asked, you know, something like, where was that question? It said, uh, estimate the populations for the year 1941, 71, 91 and whatever years. The moment you drag and drop with the formula in hand, you got all your solutions. You see how cool it becomes, right? Helpful, no? Part E again is an analytical question, uh, which is just solving the differential equation uh, dp by dt equals kp. Um, that's an analytical solution, uh, and again, uh, as I showed earlier, I have the solution worked out for you guys. Uh, if you are interested, I will send it to you. But I'll just show it to you quickly, just because we are here right now. That's what they've given us. DP by DT is KP, and uh, teachers and students who have done this before, you know that it's just a variable separable form. And uh, once you've separated, I think the question says using the years 1911 and 1921. Okay, so when you substitute uh, 1911 uh, and 1921, using those values, you can find the value of K and C rewriting it because they wanted to read it in this form okay in the question they said uh, it should be written in the form uh, p is equal to a times that's your a all right a times e to the power of kt and uh, so this is just an, uh, what do you call it um, analytical solution i'll be happy to share with you if you're interested uh, i'm sure you'll be able to solve it yourselves but Firby, if you want that i would be more than happy to share with you but coming back to our question uh, and coming back to our calculator if you look at the last part of this paper, uh, question, it says, comment on the usefulness of this exponential model. And they have given you what do you mean by that. They say to do so, you may find it useful to compare the estimates using what you did here in D and this analytical solution. So then what you do is that you come back to your table. You come back to your table. All right. So you had that estimated population here. Right. And guess what? All you got to do is that enter the value here on uh, so I have the formula here 331 I I'll just type it the way I have it here right now okay um, just watch what I'm doing okay so what should I call this I'll call this analytic 
population. I don't know. It sounds very vague, but that's all right. Um, and we want it for 1941 comparing with 1941, right? So let's put the formula here, okay? Or let's put it here. Just watch what's happening when I put the formula here, okay? Since all this while we found formula here, this is actually a, a general formula for the column, all right? So let's take a look at this one right now, okay? So I'm going to put the formula here. I'm going to call it equal to this was, remember, um, this was, um, you know what I showed you earlier on that, uh, on my iPad uh, screen? The, so I'm just going to enter whatever I had there, all right? Um, so I'm going to write down 3341 and times e to the power of 0. Point. Now, now is the killer. Are you ready for this? All right, so I'm going to put times. I'm going to put a bracket and guess what? I'm just going to put this column A. Don't not the name T2 that we've given it, but the column A. I'm just going to put A here. All right, column A. And guess what? Did you just see that? Did you guys just see that? That's pretty insane. It's pretty cool, huh? So just like that, the moment you've solved your analytical solution, you put the formula there and automatically every cell gets populated. And then you can do your commenting because I think the question was about, you know, comparing those two and then writing your comments about, you know, uh, the difference, maybe you can say which one is a little higher, maybe it was an underestimate, an overestimate, you're suggesting improvements, uh, so on and so forth. Um, that's about it that I have to share from here, uh, from my end. Um, any any questions? Did I go too fast or something? Or I hope I made something, certain things clear and showed how to use the data spreadsheet and the modeling. Some of you are very familiar with the regression. I heard those words there. <clears throat> So we didn't go into all this regression, but I was just showing you some features from the uh, data spreadsheet. Um, yeah, that's about it from my end. Uh, time for questions. I'll wait for questions. I thought there'll be many people who have questions. Yeah, uh, if uh, somebody said, can we do Voronoi, can, can we draw Voronoi diagrams? Uh, I haven't found a, a method to draw as yet, but there should be a way. There should be a way. I'll find out, okay? Because I think this question has come many times uh, I don't teach AI, to be honest with you. Uh, uh, Voronoi diagrams comes in part, but if you can draw it on a paper, then there should be a way to draw it on the GDC, uh, on the TI Inspire. I have, like I said, I've not tried it myself, uh, but I will get back to you on that. All right. I, I think there should be a way, yeah. Um, this is Jimmy over here. Uh, yeah, I, I, I think just to maybe clarify some doubts that I saw um, from the questions, at least from um, my section, was that a lot of people were actually asking with regards to the TI-84 and uh, whether can we do these features in the TI-84. Uh, unfortunately, not all features uh, can be done. Uh, what you see today in today's session can be seen in the TI-84. Like for example, having the Excel file, having the Excel file and having it in uh, uh, doing using the, the different tabulations, uh, having the slider function. There's such a lot more. Uh, I think even some of the asking about Voronoi diagram, or, um, unfortunately not on the 84. The 84 has uh, certain limitations. So um, using the TI Inspire would be something useful. And uh, with what uh, Swati actually mentioned and um, advertised uh, at the start of the session of the free six months program, uh, I, I would suggest that you can probably consider um, exploring the TI Inspire uh, software and try to, uh, once this uh, uh, webinar has, uh, has been uploaded, uh, probably try to actually use this, uh, the uh, TI Inspire and see how do you actually uh, explore those questions. Yeah, because that's, that's the whole um, purpose of this webinar. Yeah, thanks. Somebody is asking about this. So that is just an iPad. I'm using the, um, what do you call that, OneNote. It's just a OneNote thing I'm using with, uh, on the iPad. And uh, yeah. And UG, uh, amortization, um, uh, financial applications, yeah. Uh, again, that's an... Uh, Again, that's an AI thing. Uh, it's more on the financial calculator uh, bit. I haven't explored financial calculator as much. Um, and give me some time. I'll get back to you. All right. I'll get back to. Okay.
Again, it's an AI, more of an AI topic. I think more many, uh, you all AI teachers or students? It's more on the financial calculator. So maybe one day, uh, you know, uh, we can take something only on exploring the uh, financial calculator aspects. There's a lot even I have to figure out on that. Okay. Well, if there are no more questions, then we can hand it over to Jyoti. Oh, Swati. Who, yeah. Who? Swati? Yeah, thank you, John. And thank you, Jimmy, for your very informative session. It was great learning. And uh, yeah, the participants, if you have any more queries regarding the sales part or any more queries regarding the calculator or any topic, if you want to explore, you can mail us on the below email IDs. And yes, the session is recorded. We will share with you the recording part link on your email IDs. So thank you everyone for joining the webinar. Take care and stay safe.